welcome back to another edition of 10 for the Writers. Your writers today are myself, Will Weisbaum, and with me is... Adam Weiser. First off, we would like to thank all the subscribers out there for making the 10-4 series and many of our other fine programs and publications possible through their generous donations, as well as all the backers for making the dream of Star Citizen possible. Thanks, guys. And gals. Yeah, all of you. <laughs> How about we dig into it? Yeah. All right, let's get going. Knight2631 asks, I love the newscasting, just like watching the live news. I would like to know if on, let's say, Planet Zion, the governor Hoover Heaver has been kidnapped, leaving an uproar in the community. Now, if someone is flying next to the planet when it flashes on their screen in the cockpit, can they fly there, attempt to help, and see you know, the mess going on? Or is it more like, okay, it happened, skip the drama, now we get to see kind of the, the economic result and, and impact in the rest of the game. Okay, so um, breaking news reports will definitely have elements of the game that you will be able to go and respond to. Um, it probably won't be as kind of like massive world breaking all the time where something happens and you all need to rush there. But it may give you, it may open the door to an opportunity for you to go to a specific location and see what's going on. Kind of like meet people on the street or kind of like pick up bits of information uh, that can help lead you to other missions that, that are involved with it. You, you need to remember that once news breaks on kind of like a universal wide scale, that it's already probably happened and there's always uh, probably a few things that have, that have happened in between. So it, it may not mean you'll be able to go there and, and always see craziness happening right then and there, but there definitely will hopefully be a way to direct you towards locations where there might be jobs, there might be opportunities, there might be NPCs or other, other elements of the game like that that you can go and interact with and, and hopefully create your own story from. Yeah, uh, hats off to Circus and Standy for bringing the Empire Report to life. It's been a lot of fun having that as part of ATV. I've been really enjoying watching them uh, and helping to create them. So it, we'd definitely like to continue that on into the game. And we didn't do the uh, little asterisk earlier, but everything that we say now is still in development and should be taken with a grain of salt <laughs> as we're working for. But yeah, but like the, the kind of more procedural stuff most likely won't tie into news events, but if we have a big planned event, rather than just relying on mission boards or the normal job givers, it would be really neat to learn of a major outbreak of our vandal attack or something like that of a large scale through hearing it on the news and that cues players in that this is a location that if I get to, something's happening or something's going down. And it can be a starting point for a lot of other side missions that could be interesting. So it'll definitely be something fun. Josh Kabosh asks, what are the narcotics going to be like in game? Can we consume and manufacture them? Or is it purely a trade item? We've kind of been talking about how our various narcotics and medicines were going to be going to work in the game. And it's something we have to develop a lot further with design. I mean, the Endeavor was a great first step in talking about, you know, how that awesome science ship is going to tie into hospitals and creating medicine and stuff. Um, we already have a great example of, uh, of a light narcotic use. When you go to your fancy bar in your hangar and you drink some booze, you'll start seeing like your vision get all blurry and stuff. So I think that's kind of a, a first indicator of how we'd like to see narcotic use progress in the game, that if you, if you go through the effort of taking a drug, it should have some fun, weird effect to some extent. And that, the, to what extent still has to be figured out. but. You know, I could see taking a, a stim that lets you have your run for a slightly longer time because you're all jacked up, and maybe then afterwards you crash out and can barely move or stuff like that. Um, or maybe it'll just be recreational drugs that make things yeah. go crazy for a little bit. That yeah. could be really interesting, too. So definitely things we want to explore, and having that kind of gameplay balance will be important to work out with the designers. Um, as far as manufacture, that would also be really neat. It w if hopefully will allow players to produce medicines and what are drugs other than just kind of illegal medicines Super that you take to medicines. feel good. Yeah. yeah, That you shouldn't do. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> reek or wreck? What do you mean? Reek? Reek. Reek. Let's go Reek. Game of Thrones. Reek. All right. Question for writers from Reek. In the PU, players will likely gain renown infamy by engaging in many activities. 
Will the game world recognize and convey the renowned infamy of players by using narratives, uh, missions, and NPC conversations and interactions throughout the verse? I, I think, again, as we, as we kind of like start to dig into how all this is going to play out, um, I, the reputation system will hopefully be able to have NPCs respond to players based on how their reputation in, in the universe. That's, that's kind of the, the ideal behind it. Um, so yeah, I, I think the way NPCs treat you, um, the, when it comes to maybe, I'm not sure uh, yet, that's something we had to figure out, but maybe certain missions will become available to you if you have a certain reputation or if, you're, if you have a certain renown that, that might open a few extra things for you. So yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see once we dig into it how we can uh, integrate uh, kind of like the, the lore that you're building around yourself into actual missions for you. Yeah, and with 2.0 coming online, we're, we're starting to work with designers to dip our toes into kind of the mission structure and, and think about how your reputation might tie into that. And I think, I think it'll be nice if we can get it to a way where NPCs aren't omniscient. Like, there wouldn't be a reason why a shopkeeper would know on site that you're a world-class bounty hunter. He's not connected to that world, so he wouldn't be cued into that. Maybe, you know, so we would, hopefully the reputation will make sense that all right, maybe an advocacy agent would recognize you if you have a strong reputa reputation as an outlaw, and now a tie-in or other outlaws would recognize you on site and kind of respect you and open up doors for that way. But like a random NPC maybe wouldn't so much know on site. So kind of figuring out that balance, and because there is so many different layers of like winding through different elements that it'll be important to kind of minimize the options while maximizing how much impact they have. So kind of less is more kind of thinking. So really kind of trying to cue in on that will be something we look to do. Sailor67 asks, are there plans for including major player driven events like Operation Pitchfork is attempting in the lore? If so, can they impact the major story arcs you are writing or just news stories? We're really hopeful that we'll be able to take player influenced events and incorporated into the lore. That's kind of one of the things we're really excited about that Chris has talked about before that, you know, if you are the player who kills the Dread Pirate Roberts, you'll be going down in history as, as that person who did that. And so if enough players get together and have a major impact or cut off resources and stuff, we're hopefully going to be working to monitor the game, see what's happening and respond with uh, not only with our kind of regular content updates that we're hoping to have, but as well as in the Galactopedia and whatever news stories and lore posts that you know we keep on going to be able to look at what's happening in real time in the game and have that influence us so that it will be a conversation almost between the developers and the players as they're playing, and that's really exciting. Yeah, I mean, the, the message boards are gonna, gonna blow up anyways when, when the players get to start doing something or organizing, so it, it's gonna be pretty obvious uh, what, what's going on in a lot of locations for us. So it, 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 I, th I think it's gonna be really awesome to be able to, to tap into that and to, to use the potential for that to, to may, maybe open up aspects of the story or of the world that, uh, that we didn't quite think of at first or to do, to do certain things, so. Yeah, I think that'll be a really fun part of the game to be able to, to try to integrate what you guys are doing into some of the ideas we have and, and see how it manifests. Yeah, it'll just come down to kind of really streamlining the process and, and trying to focus on remaining agile and how we can create this content yeah. to make sure they do it. So a lot of questions remain on exactly how that's going to work, but it's something that we're aspiring to. So hopefully. Yeah, that's great. Doc Andy asks, as a scientist, I have to ask, you mentioned collaborations with actual scientists before. Could you share something about that process in which parts they were involved? Did you use their input to explain your more uh, fantasy elements or did you change the lore to accommodate the science? How do you keep the balance between believable scientific explanation and enjoyable, interesting fantasy regarding star citizen technology? Recently, when we, we did work on the star map, we, we definitely did uh, a talk to a handful of astrophysicists to get, to get some input 
on the actual uh, scientific breakdown of certain systems, of habitable zones, of what kind of planet could end up where based on which kind of star, and, and details like that are, are very important for us so that there is that there is a scientific backbone to the star map, to what you're going to see, and how that it might affect, you know, the habitability of certain worlds or or, or not to a certain degree. So it's uh, I, I know Will has actually gone out and uh, you know tracked down some 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 young ast you know astrophysicists willing to help us kind of like vet all these systems, and it's it's definitely a process we're in the middle of to make sure that everything is uh, you know it, it has a has a scientific footing to it. That's for sure. Yeah, there's a, we start up, there's a neat organization called the, I'm going to mess up this name, but the Science and Entertainment Exchange, which specializes in hooking up uh, people who work in the entertainment industry with scientists who donate their time uh, to give scientific advice just out of the sheer desire to make entertainment more scientifically accurate. So we worked a little bit with them as well as contacting people on our own. And it's a, it's a real kind of fun balance between accuracy and the fantasy elements of it and a lot of times it just comes down to does it does it feel right <laughs> which yeah. is kind of a, a thing when you're when you're striking that balance between what is fun because sometimes real hard science facts can either be in, like stop you from doing something that would otherwise be really fun or it can also be so crazy that it doesn't feel right when you hear it like there's this weird thing where if you get too accurate and it, it goes against what people's common expectations are and so you have to say like all right even if this is true it's going to really confuse people to do it that yeah. way <laughs> and then you're like uh, yeah and then you're going to have to explain to a lot of people oh but this is scientifically accurate even though it feels yeah. very wrong so there's all these things that i it's it's been kind of a fun process to yep. to work with them and and yeah, hopefully we'll be releasing further updates on the star map where we get to unveil some more of the hard numbers that are we're using in the background so that you can actually see exact distances and stuff. And then, you know, still, those are still gonna be changed and fleshed out more as we talk more with the designers and we actually get ships flying in more and more of these systems. We're gonna have to make further adjustments. So a lot of back and forth and give and take on that. Gerald Evans asks, is there anything about underground racing being written into the lore? With the Armada package being as much of a hit as it was, my org is looking to start an underground circuit of capital ship cup racing, where Idris and larger ships are the timing rings and that the racers pass through to mark progress around a course. I had the idea when I saw the first video of Star Citizen featuring the bangle, and then the Top Gun homage sealed it. After seeing the hangar control room in the Citizen Con Morrow tour, I realized that tracking which ships come and go might not only be simple, but even recorded on the ship's log. So underground racing is something that we have worked in to lore, and it's also something that'd be really fun to provide the tools for players to set up on themselves, being able to kind of create their own race courses. And I've had a couple conversations with design, so it's something that's interesting and maybe we'll be able to do. We still have to work out some of the details of it. It's a really fun idea of using capital ships that way yeah. as kind of the rings to race through, so that was pretty neat. I'm not sure if the ships themselves would allow that, but it's a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, different forms of racing, too. Like, we've talked about, you know, right now, most of the racing is done with very fast ships. But getting in, like, the larger ships, imagine, like, a couple hull E's, like, racing <laughs> around a course, like, that would be really funny. And, and uh, like, some of the systems we've, we've established lore for... Yeah, there's uh, there there's the Abel Baker Abel Baker challenge, which takes place in the the Baker system, which is right now in the the lore canon, the uh, kind of the the most famous kind of underground race uh, in the in the verse. But that said, it doesn't mean it's the only one, and it doesn't mean that uh, if if a really cool race uh, is somehow put together by an org or by by you guys, that uh, that it wouldn't kind of raise in prominence. So uh, yeah, it's definitely something that we know is out there. Um, you know, NASCAR uh, here in the United States started off as as bootleggers, kind of uh, just trying to run away from cops, and that turned into a race. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, in the course of the the making of the game, that you guys find some cool things to to be able to 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 do something similar to to modify modify your ships or to 
uh, you know, different courses or maybe even parts of the, the universe. I know we're, we're, we're conscious of, of, uh, of planets and where asteroid belts are, stuff like that. And, and once all those get fleshed out and you get to actually see them in the game, you may find that some places that were never intended to be a race course actually make for really cool race courses. <laughs> so uh, we're very excited to see you guys get out there and, uh, and uh, do something like that. Next question is from Aragorn BH. Uh, what are the chances that players will get to read log entries made by pilots who have been involved in important uh, Star Citizen lore events? I mean, it, there, it's yes, basically. Uh, there already is a uh, lore series called uh, Discovered, which uh, you can find a handful uh, already on the, the RSI website that are um, kind of stories of famous expeditions, famous uh, explorers that have discovered jump points or new worlds or, or different things like that. So uh, there's a, we're already starting to build a little bit, uh, a little bit of that in. Uh, we definitely have more planned. Uh, and it could be the kind of thing that maybe you're discovering a wreck and finding that log and you're the one who gives it to the Ark to be stored there. I would imagine that hopefully, you know, the Ark would have records of this kind as well, the more important historical ones, which would be interesting to explore. So it'll all um, be really just about, you know, how much how much time and content we can create. Yeah. But it'd be really fun to have. So. Yeah, and I know just me personally, and I know, I know Dave and, and Will does this too, but there, there is such a, a long history that we have here that if you're rereading some of the lore and you find a moment that's really cool, and you're like, oh, that's that would be something good to kind of backlog for later. I, I definitely have a list of, of moments in history that we can go back to and maybe delve into further. And as Will said, it's just a it's just a matter of time management at this point and, and being able to allocate our resources to to the best possible places. But it's definitely something on our mind, and uh, you can you can expect plenty of logs out there explaining some. And and we yeah we floated the idea too as well as about making some his more important historical moments playable as well with some kind of special mission packs or something like that so that might be really fun yeah, if we end yeah. up being able to do that so. be very cool and from landscaper will there be book newspaper blogs in game I envision pulling up an app on the Moby Glass and browsing my collection of magazines selecting a rare classic book or catching up on the news and sports maybe you'll use this as a way to feed us lore totally like kind of tying into the last question as well which is why I chose both of them. It's, it's something we started to seed in a little bit already with 2.0. What we have coming up is uh, having this content that you'll be able to find and read as well as sit back and, you know, kind of have random material. It's, uh, it takes a fair chunk of effort to create these assets. Like I was always really impressed playing in kind of the Bethesda games where they have the full books you can read and something I thought was really neat. So we'll have to see how much of something like that we can do. Uh, I mean, one of the neat things we have is that so many of you out there are already generating a ton of really cool content. So maybe it's the kind of thing where we could look into doing a call for, you know, magazine articles for this one kind of magazine and take backer submissions for that to feature in game could be really fun, but we'd have to figure all that out. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's definitely every every, every day. It, it's great to come in and, and look at the message boards and and see some of the other role playing you guys are doing because it it's really inspiring and it's really great to see your own personal spin on um, on the world that's being built. So um, we, uh, it's just a matter of yeah, being able to. It's a different time, a, a different matter of time uh, relocation because to have to go through and curate and to make sure that the stuff you're putting in would fall into lore will we'll also take a little bit of work. Um, but I think it would be very cool and I think something uh, that you guys would, resp would respond to well. So, yeah, that's, you know, hopefully down the road at some point. But, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll definitely be, you know, especially all the Spectrum Dispatches, you'll, you'll probably be able to find there too. So plenty of content for you to go through. Yeah, and, and hats off for me as well for in the recent news updates and stuff. It's just been absolutely awesome reading your guys' in-lore responses. So much fun. Really enjoy it. So. Next question is from uh, Chiffrey. Uh, for us explorers out there and those who like to live in the edge of the galaxy, how will new systems be handled by lore writers? Uh, will you already have lore written up for these systems and just copy and paste them after X time passes? Or will player interaction in the system dictate how the lore is written for it? When we're ready to release new systems to you guys, I we will definitely have a, a pretty you know at the beginning a firm idea of kind of any lore that's behind that to a certain degree. If there's any secret 
places or if it was maybe formerly habitated or, or not or visited by a different species. We'll probably have, at least for you know the beginning, a, a good idea of that. But I think, I think where the system goes from there, I think will depend a lot on who finds it and, and how, they, you know, how they present it. You know, some people may want to keep the system for themselves, for their org, for their, for their pirate group, and use it as some kind of like black market hub for certain things. Others may just turn around the information, give it to the UEE, sell it off, and then kind of invite people in. So you know, there, there's definitely going to be an element where you, the players, will be able to help determine it. Um, if there's any kind of important story, you know, point that we want to get across there, that's something I think we would probably have figured out before you, you get to it. Yeah, uh, I mean, until we have procedural generation of systems up and running, it's all going to be lovingly handcrafted, uh, which means, you know, we'll work with designers and talk to them and come up with an idea for the systems. And it will be definitely interesting be to have these systems that have had uh, zero human interaction, or at least probably if that's like mysterious human interaction. I don't know, like there's interesting things we could do where you find remnants of an old civilization of humans that you didn't know had been there. Anyway, but... Potentially. <laughs> they were, it's they Potentially. going off. Uh, <laughs> but, but so like that'll be very different than a lot of the kind of system lore we've been developing. It's like, all right, what has the impact of humans been on this system? But starting in fresh, it means the backers will get to have a say in all those possible directions of what ends up winning out or how that you know planet is either terraformed or not or who are the settlers that bring that take a ride on your starliner out to that system so it'll be really cool to see. Yeah, I fully expect that we might have an idea for what a system is going to be and then you guys will get in there and do something to it that we just never expected. That's uh, that's going to be kind of fun, I think. Mantis78 asks, how will alien language barriers be handled in the PU? Will our characters automatically understand alien languages or will we need a translator, NPC, or some sort of device that can be purchased in game? Can languages be learned by the character? So this is something that we've had initial talks on and as we're continuing to work with the linguists to develop the language, we're still kind of sorting out exactly how it's going to work in game. We have a couple ideas so far. Um, one of them is that that your Moby Glass will come with a, you know, a standard, really rough translator that can translate stuff in real time for you, but it wouldn't be able to capture all the full nuance of a native speaker. So it would be um, that, that you're getting the general idea of what an alien is saying in their language, but you wouldn't be able to fully pick up on everything. Because we, we want to reward players who take the time. We're going through all the effort of making these languages real languages and speakable, so we want to reward players who take the time to actually learn them, because that's, that's awesome. Um, you asked if characters would be able to learn languages, and kind of, I think the, the current direction might be that there won't be like a, a thing you can buy where your character speaks Banu. If you want your character to speak Banu, you're gonna have to learn Banu yourself. Uh, and what you might be able to buy is a, an NPC who can translate for you, or a, a better translator for your Moby Glass or something like that, some kind of in-game mechanic, but, but making their different layers of interactions with it. But yeah, if you want to learn that language, you're going to have to learn that language. Yeah, so if, you, if you're a trader who's going to Xi'an territory a lot, you know, it'll, it'll definitely benefit you to, to get a little bit more in detail with that because you might be able to pick up on small hints or small phrasing things that, that might lead you in a different direction than, than just someone who uh, just wanders, wanders in there for the first time will, will be able to get. So, yeah. so org, start, start drawing straws on who's going to have to learn those languages. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully Excellent. we'll have more information on that as we continue to develop. Yeah, it's definitely something we're thinking of, though. Cool. Well, that, that makes 10 questions. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our very uh, not set in stone and unconcrete kind of just feelings more than answers. Yeah, our emotions. <laughs> so we yeah. feel things might work out. And a really big thank you once again to you subscribers for making this possible and for everyone who believes in Star Citizen and is helping us bring the game to life. Thank you, backers. Appreciate it. Uh, always fun answering your questions, and we'll see you next time around the verse. No, no. no? See you around 10 4. This is a different show. What? <laughs> this, is, this isn't around the verse? You can't use that here. You can't use that? That's copyright. Just we're talking about that. Yeah. <laughs>
Hey guys, thanks for watching um, Ten for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse. This video made possible by the ICC Stellar Surveyors and subscribers like you. Thank you.